Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action, crime, drama, and sci-fi film called Code 8. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Superpowered human beings became an essential part of the workforce in the 20th century. The government has invited people with special abilities to register their powers and help build Lincoln City. However, the demand for powered workers has waned since the Second Industrial Revolution because businesses prefer to use automated systems. Due to the lack of opportunities for powered citizens, crime syndicates have begun exploiting them in different ways. A criminal organization called the Trust has been extracting the spinal fluid of powered humans to create a highly addictive drug called Psych. As the problems continue to arise from the drug, people have begun calling for new laws to restrict the use of superpowers. The police force has started using drones and robots called Guardians to monitor and apprehend powered humans who work without a permit. A Class 5 electric named Connor Reed tries to earn a living by working as a temporary laborer at construction sites while applying for a more permanent job. After a job interview, he heads straight to a construction site to determine if the foreman could use another electric. The foreman agrees to let him work half a day, but the police soon arrive to inspect the location to make sure powers are not being used. They order the workers to look at the sky, so the drone can detect if they are powered. The cops tell the laborers with powers to leave the site and get a permit if they want to keep working. As the investigation goes on, authorities learn that one of the workers has an arrest warrant. While the cops are arresting the worker, he emits fire from his hands and tries to escape. Guardians soon drop down from the drone and shoot him until he's dead. Elsewhere in Lincoln City, the police conduct a drug raid on an apartment of a powered man. The Guardian breaks down the door, but the robot is soon disabled when the suspect, a Class 4 brawn, hurls a disc towards it, hitting it on its neck. The suspect tries to escape through the window, but Officer Park enters the room and threatens to shoot him. As they search the place, an officer discovers a room filled with superpowered individuals being tapped for their spinal fluid. The police also found multiple bags of psych in the apartment linked to a crime lord named Marcus Sutcliffe. Connor visits his mom at the grocery as she is being scolded by her boss, Dave, because she accidentally froze the sauce and dropped it on the ground. Mary Reed, a cryokinetic, has been having problems controlling her abilities because of a brain tumor. Connor becomes incensed by how Dave speaks to his mother, confronting him and almost using his powers. The boss, however, is undaunted and tells them both to leave the store. Connor urges his mom to start chemo on the way home, but Mary tells him that they can't afford it. The following day, while Connor waits for a side job at a street corner, he notices a truck from Lincoln Power. His friend Travis warns him not to get involved with them because they're part of Sutcliffe's crew. The van approaches them, and the driver tells them he's looking for an electric, but only class 2 or above. Connor hesitates, but he eventually walks toward the vehicle and tells the driver that he wants $200 up front. The driver, Garrett, agrees and tells him to get in the van. Inside the van, a mute brawn named Freddy tells him to put on a safety vest through sign language. Garrett takes Connor to a chemical plant to disable an electric fence. Connor tries to use a bolt cutter to cut the wires, but he was taken aback by the electric shock, so he decided to overload it. A pyro named Maddie melts the lock allowing the van to enter the plant. As they load chemical barrels onto their truck, a guard arrives and tries to call for backup. Garrett uses his telekinetic power to take his radio so the guard yields and tells them he didn't see anything. As they leave the site, the police receive an alert for a break-in at Jones Chemical. Patrol officers are told to look out for a red cargo van. Connor tells Garrett to pay him and let him go, but Garrett says the job's not finished. Garrett parks the car under a bridge and asks his crew to strip off the logo and the red sheet covering the actual white paint job of the vehicle. The drone spots their van, but the cops realize that the color doesn't match the description so they continue searching elsewhere. Garrett drives the van into a garage and asks a man named Rhino to take them to Sutcliffe, who has the power to read minds. Rhino leads them to a secret passageway to Sutcliffe's club. Inside the club, Wesley Cumbo, a representative of the trust, grills Sutcliffe for his failure to meet his payment obligations. When Sutcliffe tries to explain the reason for not paying, Cumbo tells Sutcliffe to read the mind of his associate, Copperhead. He tells Cumbo that Copperhead is thinking of different ways to slit his throat. Cumbo tells him that he has one week to pay what he owes to the trust. After Cumbo leaves the club, Garrett introduces Connor to Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe reads Connor's mind and concludes that he will be helpful to his crew. Sutcliffe tells a woman named Nia, to show Connor around. Nia offers him a drink, but Connor says he's just passing through. Sutcliffe tells Garrett that he can't pay for the chemicals at the moment because he needs to pay Combo before he sends his thugs after them. Sutcliffe asks Garrett about Connor's powers, wondering if he can use the electric for another job. Garrett tells him that Connor is strong, but he still needs to train him. Sutcliffe tells Garrett to prepare Connor for the new stint quickly because it will earn them a lot of money. Garrett drops Connor off and gives him another $300 as a bonus. He tells him to wait at the same place again the next day to earn more money. Before running off, Garrett advises him not to waste his talent. At home, Mary tells Connor that he went back to the grocery to get her job back. Connor tells her that her boss is a jerk, but she says they don't have much choice because they need the money. 
Back at the club, Nia approaches Sutcliffe and tells him that she's out of sight. Sutcliffe shows her a vial of the drug, but she has to do something for him before she could get it. On the streets, officers Park and Davis investigate the robbery at Jones Chemicals. Park concludes that the suspects took 200 gallons of chemicals to water down Sutcliffe's site with Hydra. Davis tells Park that an electric shorted the fence and a pyro broke the lock. Park tells Davis to come up with a list of electrics who has that kind of power. The next day, Travis advises Connor to be careful when he does a job with Sutcliffe's men. Soon, the foreman from their last job arrives looking for two electrics, but Connor sees Garrett's car and decides to go with Garrett instead. Garrett still doubts Connor's motivation, so he asks him why he decided to work with them instead of finding a legitimate job. Connor reveals that he needs the money to pay for his mom's treatment. Garrett decides to test his ability by asking him to short a car's alarm outside the diner. Garrett activates the alarm by slamming his fist on the hood. As the alarm blares, Connor asks Garrett how much he would get when he joins them on their next heist. He deactivates the alarm after Garrett tells him he'll receive $25,000. Garrett learns that Connor's dad, who's an electric like him, got shot while he's robbing a liquor store. He concludes that his mother raised him without power so he won't end up like his father. Garrett soon starts training Connor by asking him to light a bulb, but he burned the coil on his first try. While they prepare for the heist, Connor does other menial tasks for Garrett, including collecting payments from drug dealers. Soon, Connor can keep a bulb lit without blowing it up. Garrett tests Connor's strength again by pitting him against another electric who refuses to pay him. The man blasts Connor with electricity, but it doesn't have much effect on him. Connor brings the man down with a stronger jolt to his chest. Garrett trains him to use his powers and advises him to be more ruthless when dealing with other people in their circles. One night, Connor decides to visit Dave at the grocery and threatens him. At home, Connor tells his mom that he was accepted for a permanent job. Outside the house, Park and Davis are on a stakeout observing Connor. They learn from his records that he has no permanent work while he struggles to pay for his mom's medical bills. Park tells Davis to include him on the list of persons of interest. The following day, Connor and Garrett visit a bank to observe their routine and find out the location of the security cameras as well as the vault. Connor tells them that there's no way to open the vault without activating the alarm. Garrett says that the drone's best time is 7 minutes, so they have to be out in 5. At the grocery, Mary is puzzled by Dave's behavior because he is much nicer to her and even goes out of his way to avoid assigning her a task. That night, the gang enters the bank armed with guns. Connor heads straight to the vault to short the power, preventing the bank from locking it remotely. As the alarm sounds off, they ask an employee to open the vault manually. Garrett threatens her as she dials the combination, but Connor tries to calm her down, telling her to relax and take deep breaths. When the vault opens, Garrett becomes furious as he finds out that most of the money is gone. The employee tells them that the bank already cleared the vault earlier that day. The gang decides to take what's left and leave the bank. When they get outside, the drones are already waiting for them. Connor hits the drones with a surge, sending the aerial vehicles, loaded with guardians, crashing to the ground. They drive back to Sutcliffe's club to tell him that they only managed to take $50,000. As Garrett and Sutcliffe argue about paying off the trust, Copperhead approaches them and shoots Sutcliffe. Rhino blocks the projectiles with his bulletproof body, so Copperhead decides to aim her gun at Nia. Connor blasts the weapon out of her hand, so Copperhead comes after him with a knife. Rhino shoots her down and walks towards her to shoot her three more times, making sure she's dead. Later, Connor walks in on Nia as she is getting high on psych. Connor wonders why Kumbo's assassin went after her, but she tells him that it wasn't the first time someone pulled a gun on her. Nia notices Connor's injury on his arm and heals it. Nia reveals that the assassin tried to kill her because of her abilities. When Connor asks why Nia keeps healing Sutcliffe, she discloses that she's indebted to him. When Connor gets home, Mary confronts him about the money he kept in his drawer. He tells her that he got it from working overtime. But Mary says she called the office where Connor applied for a job, but they never heard of him. While he explains why he turned to crime to earn money, his mother suddenly loses control of her ability and collapses to the ground. At the hospital, the doctor tells Connor that the tumor is pressing her brain against the skull, and they need to operate on her right away to prevent it from getting worse. He inquires about the cost of the surgery and finds out that he can't afford it. Outside the hospital, Park and Davis wait for Connor to invite him to the police station. Park asks him about the robbery at the chemical plant and the bank, but Connor says he doesn't know anything. They warn Connor that he's working for the most vicious criminal in Lincoln City, referring to Sutcliffe. Park brags that they are about to burn up $4 million worth of psych belonging to Sutcliffe next week. He surmises that it won't be long before they bring the crime lord down. Park mentions Connor's ailing mother and offers to help him if he gives them information about Sutcliffe. Davis interrupts them and starts taunting Connor by insulting his dad. Connor gets exasperated and tells them to recheck the security footage because they have the wrong person. Park tells Davis to let Connor go, arguing that they don't have enough evidence to hold him. Davis recommends planting evidence on Connor and reminds him that powered individuals can be dangerous. Park walks away, appalled at Davis's suggestion. After getting out of the station, Garrett picks Connor up on the street. Connor swears that he didn't say anything to the police and tells Garrett to take him to Sutcliffe because he has an idea for a job. When they arrive at the garage, Sutcliffe reads Connor's mind and learns that he didn't reveal anything. 
After hearing Connor's idea, Garrett suggests intercepting the police when they transport the $10 million worth of psych to the incineration site. Connor strikes a deal with Sutcliffe, telling him to hand over Nia to him when he gets the psych. Sutcliffe figures out that Connor will use Nia to cure his dying mom. Nia gets upset and leaves the room. Garrett strikes a deal of his own, asking Sutcliffe to consider him a partner instead of a part of his crew. Sutcliffe agrees, saying Garrett earned it. As they plan the heist, Connor insists that no law enforcement should get killed. Connor approaches Nia and promises to let her go once she heals his mom. Nia snaps at him, telling him that she only matters to him because she's a healer. On the day of the heist, the gang prepares the roadblocks and watches out for the armored van. Drones follow the van, but they'll have to fall back once they reach the no-fly zone. Upon reaching the area, the driver sees the roadblock and takes a detour. Maddie and Freddie follow the van in their car as Garrett blocks it with a garbage truck. As the driver yells at him to move his vehicle, Garrett tries to stall, allowing Connor to build up his power to blast the van. Moments after Garrett gets out of the truck, Connor finally hits the van with a powerful surge, knocking out the Guardians. Garrett uses his telekinetic powers to keep the Guardians incapacitated. Connor shorts the Guardian circuits near Garrett while Freddy and Maddie disable the remaining robots. Maddie burns a hole through the armored van big enough for Freddy to drop a tear gas inside. The cops soon exit the vehicle as they choke. After failing to receive any response from the van, the drone decides to enter the no-fly zone. Maddie takes the cases of psych from the guards and hands them over to Rhino. The guards beg them to let them go, but Rhino's men start shooting them. Rhino shoots Maddie in the back as she turns to see what happened to the police officers. Garrett moves Freddy out of the way with telekinesis to protect him as Rhino, and his men shoot at them. Rhino takes off, leaving two of his men to deal with Garrett and his crew. More guardians arrive at the site, allowing Garrett, Freddy, and Connor to run while Rhino's thugs are distracted. One of the thugs fires at Garrett while the other engages the guardians. The unflinching robots kill the two thugs while Garrett and his crew run to safety. As they flee, Freddy realizes a bullet hits him, so Garrett carries him to a car. Rhino arrives at Sutcliffe's bar and shows him the psych. Nia asks Sutcliffe where the others are, but he ignores her question and gives her a vial of psych. Sutcliffe hints that he can't let Nia leave because her father still owes him a lot of money. Upon learning that Freddy had died, Connor blames Garrett for the disastrous outcome of the heist. He argues that Sutcliffe betrayed them because of Garrett's demands. At the police station, Davis informs the police chief that Connor is one of the main suspects at the heist. Park, however, insists that Connor is just a pawn because he is not the type to kill police officers. Connor visits his mom at the hospital and promises her that he'll find a way to get treatment for her. Mary, however, asks him to stop what he's doing and just let her go. Meanwhile, Park visits his ex-wife's house to spend time with his daughter Lena. She tells him that other kids are afraid of her because she has been using her abilities to move objects around. As they walk along the park, Lena expresses her fears that her parents will give her away because she heard from the news that's what happens to kids like her. As Park tries to comfort her, Travis approaches him to give him a message from Connor. Park meets with Connor at a diner to find out what he wants, but he insists that it's too late for a deal. Connor assures him that he'll turn himself into the authorities, but he wants to help them catch Sutcliffe first. At the police station, the cops prepare to move out to take in Sutcliffe. At the bar, Sutcliffe starts coughing erratically, so he calls Nia over to heal him. As Nia treats him, the police shut down the power and start firing at them. During the shootout, Sutcliffe escapes with Nia and Rhino through a passageway that leads to the garage. When they arrive, Garrett shoots at them, hitting Sutcliffe in the chest. Rhino tries to fire back, but Garrett uses his telekinetic powers to knock the gun out of his hand. Garrett fires multiple bullets into Rhino, but he still manages to get up and charge him. Before Rhino could reach him, Garrett uses his telekinetic ability to slow him down. Connor soon arrives to blast Rhino with electricity. Meanwhile, Sutcliffe tries to point his gun at Nia as he asks her to save him. Rhino manages to grab Connor and slam him on the table. Connor tries to break free by electrifying Rhino, but the voltage wasn't strong enough to stop him. As Rhino strangles Connor, Garrett takes a sharp metal tool and stabs Rhino in the eye. Connor finishes him off by shooting a jolt of electricity through his head. Nia approaches Sutcliffe, but instead of healing him, she takes his gun. Garrett uses his telekinetic power to strangle Sutcliffe and take the gun away from Nia. Connor tells Nia that she'll be free to go once she heals his mom. Garrett gives Connor Sutcliffe's gun, advising him to take what he needs. Nia, however, shows him the wound on his arm as a result of healing him days ago. She tells Connor that she could die if she treats his mother. Despite her objection, Connor still takes Nia to the hospital. When they arrive, Nia touches Mary to heal her, but Connor soon stops her after seeing that she's struggling. When Mary wakes up, Connor approaches her and holds her hand as her life fades. Park and Davis soon find Sutcliffe's dead body at the garage. Connor arrives at the police station with Nia to turn himself over to the authorities. He tells her that the truck has a full tank to take her wherever she needs to go. Soon after the tragic heist, lawmakers have proposed an outright ban on the use of powers in Lincoln City due to the murder of four police officers. Park and Davis receive an award for bravery in pursuing criminals in the city. Garrett soon meets with Cumbo, paying him twice the money that Sutcliffe owed them. Connor stops by his mom's grave, saying he won't be able to visit her for a while. 
Nia pays a visit to her dad in prison, smiling at him as she looks forward to a new life after being freed from Sutcliffe. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.